It's always riveting when Alan Watt joins us. He is a researcher, an author, radio host. Alan Watt, CutIntoTheMatrix.com, uh, joins us. And sometime I ought to read his um, bio. It is a very, very uh, interesting. Uh, he's also a musician and published a lot of uh, philosophy and poetry under pseudonyms for much of his life. He was heavily involved in the music industry as a singer, songwriter, performer, involved in folk music, blues, pop, rock, and even classical. He's also known for his uh, session guitar work. He has played with some of the most well-known artists and groups. Born in Scotland, um, he watched the subtitles of politics and media as they guided he watched the subtleties of politics and media as they guided the population of the UK covertly into the European amalgamation. And I was just talking to Alan. It's funny, he's got allergies or sinus like I do today. So we're like the dynamic duo here of, uh, of uh, but I doubt he'll sound as doltish as I have today. Uh, Alan, so much is going on, so much is happening. Uh, I said, what's your take on the shooter? And you said, well, I feel like the fool on the hill watching the world spinning around. Uh, but really, the fool on the hill isn't a fool. He, he, he sees the majesty, the beauty of the world, but also uh, the ugliness, uh, just the incredible spectacle of consciousness um, that the establishment tries to keep us from uh, opening up to because then we would be aware and not easily tricked. So they wish to keep us psychically and mentally and spiritually and financially uh, stunted. Uh, but uh, I want to get into the Hadron Superconducting Super Collider, and the, the dangers associated with that. And, and I want to get into 150 human-animal hybrids grown in UK labs. I've got a special report coming out tomorrow on this. Embryos have been produced secretly for the past three years. The Daily Mail can reveal uh, human cow, human reptoid, uh, reptile, human fish, human um, uh, frog, uh, amphibian. And uh, but but there's, there's something funny here. I remember I remember 15 years ago because I know I'd been on air a year and a half or so. I remember covering BBC articles about human embryonic chimeras because they said the only, only way they could do it was make them part part cow so that they wouldn't have rights and growing them in the utero of cows. And they were saying that had been done for five years in 1996. So it's all, and since then, every year, they say, for three years, we've been doing this. For five years, we've been doing this. That's the two stories. And it's always done the same. And you'd think Daniel Martin and Simon Cadwell at the Mail would know how to pull these articles up or use a LexisNexis. And then I remember, uh, Alan, I want you to speak to this. In fact, we'll speak to this first and then get into the shooter uh, and the Knights Templar thing and the rest of it that I know you've studied. It's why you're here. That... Uh, the, the Washington Post, it was in, it was in 2004, I think, or two, was it 2005? Because I had recently read it in the Washington Post, and about a week later, I was on Ian Punnett's Saturday Coast to Coast AM. Great interview. I love the interview. Never been invited back on. I'd, I need to get Ian Punnett on this show and return the favor, but I'd like to go back on that show. Uh, but he would challenge me a lot. And so I'd say, well, this company came out, Protegen, with a uh, corn that grows live HIV virus in it. And he wouldn't believe it, and he'd pull it up and be in the Associated Press and, and pharmacological corn. And I, I remember mentioning a Washington Post article about, um, was it his show or George? But I remember it was around that time. The Washington Post said, yes, there are chimeras, part chimpanzee, human, at big labs in Costa Rica, but you're not allowed to see them. And, and, and I think it was Punnett, or maybe it was Nori, but I don't know, it was like, oh, really? And then, and then I pulled up the article and read it to him. It all blurs at this point. But 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 the issue is you talk about spider goats, you talk about things like this that have been out for decades. People still don't believe it. Uh, and the issue here is if they're admitting this has been going on for decades now, imagine what's really going on. And so why are they now introducing this uh, to the public? I mean, this is H.G. Wells, the island of Dr. Maru, uh, you know, with the humanoid creatures demanding their rights. Wells, over 100 years ago, wrote about atomic bombs and, and basically world war and that how the U.N. would come out of that. And, of course, he was a top futurist and predictive programmer that Alan talks a lot about. So more and more, it, it does look like they've got a lot of secret technologies and things, and, we, and, they, and they may not be 30 years advanced as they admit they are. 
in their technological systems. It may be 50, 100. We don't know. I mean, more and more I realize we are basically in a matrix. because We're physically here, but through the eyes, through the olfactory, through touch, through everything, we take in this data, and the modern civilization is a false reality. It is a artificial habitat that we're in, and they're just bringing us into deeper phases. And Alan Watt is our guest. That's my preface. Alan, uh, break down what we're facing here. Yeah, you're quite right, actually. They do give you uh, a reality for the, for the vast population, and as an antique reality, uh, we think that we're on the cutting edge, and the media, of course, is there to reinforce that and, and give out little tidbits. Oh, we're, we're trying to explore this and trying to explore that. One day we'll be, we eventually hope to do this, and, and we believe it all, you see. And uh, in reality, as you say, a much higher level of reality uh, is, is the true cutting edge. We don't even know how high that goes. We know it's way above uh, top CIA level, when in the 1950s they had solid-state circuitry, they had little gizmos you'd put in your pocket that could turn someone's heart off, basically. Uh, and they used them, too. And, um, and Nick Bagage came out and showed some of this stuff and talked about it as well. So uh, we are really in the past. And that's how we can, you can at the top. That's how you can control the future. You plan the future. You bring it in and you feed the public um, predictive programming a little bit and a little bit at the time, you must also do social changes and dehumanize the people. And dehumanization is a big, big part of this agenda because uh, Julian Huxley, who was the CEO of UNESCO, the first one of UNESCO, uh, he did say that in his books that uh, they'd have to knock man off his pedestal as being supreme on the planet, bring him down to the level of animals. Now, once you start to think of yourself as an animal, uh, and, and again, you get all these nature programs, all the green programs telling you, well, you're just another animal amongst animals and you have no more rights than any other animals. And then you have to go into the, the further dehumanization of the destruction of the old cultures where uh, um, families normally had children. That was the whole point of them. And uh, now, of course, we, we don't even have so much that. So uh, we, we've seen abortion rackets going on. We're now seeing body parts sold across the world. Uh, is that we are a going business, all of us. We're a going business for someone And they're else. teaching us with the gladiatorial events and all of it to dehumanize ourselves and to see beauty as ugly and ugliness as beauty and to just yeah. wallow because a human would be shocked by the disgrace and the indignity yeah. of humans being spliced with animals and would be concerned for these poor creatures. But because they're part human, they have no right. When you torture a monkey, people will burn down your business. But, 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 but with the transhumanist environmentalist, there is a giggling sacrament in trampling humanity uh, because they really fear the power of humanity. So it's important for them, the predator class, to trample it and to hike their leg on it uh, and, and to turn it into a servile, gibbering uh, religion where the slaves revel in their own destruction. That's pretty well it, actually. Um, dehumanization, with dehumanization comes depersonalization. When you lose your identity of who you are, uh, you are in flux. When you're in flux, of course, the massive propaganda machine comes in, takes you over, and then you flow along with the new think, as it's called, as you're always new think. And so we've been programmed like this for such a long time now. Now, recently, too, we've seen the big push for euthanasia. That was the next nail in the coffin. And, and people, and they keep the, the pulse on the public now with the Internet. They know what we're thinking, what we're chatting about, what we're worried about. And so they can tell when we're ready for the next step of it. Now, I've got books going back from, from scientific journals going back 20, 30 years when they were talking. And I've got one here, actually. It's the future of mankind and the planet. And uh, top names in it, of course. And it shows you them making, breeding the public um, uh, for different functions, just like Plato talked about in the Republic, only a bit more advanced. And they said we can create men who eventually will be divers. They'll have gills like fish. And they can go down and they can, they can uh, weld the, the legs on the, the, the big uh, platforms at sea for oil and, and do that kind of stuff. In other words, they're going to make purpose-made humans or, or semi-humans for the particular job they're designed to do. And that's what it's all about, is to design their humans for specific tasks. Rather, you see, we are supposedly, according to high sociology today, we are uh, the useless eaters now. We're post-industrial. They don't need us. 
we're almost post-war once the Middle East is standardized into the world system. And then they have the predictive programming with movies like X-Men that show you everybody mutating and then how yeah. they're the poor groups whose rights aren't taken care of. And now they're going to come out with more and more of these clones, these replicants, and then the government's going to give them rights and protect them and then basically yeah. use them against the rest of us. Uh, those that won't buy into all the new technological augmentation that are really backdoor systems for, for them to... Uh, hack the brain because there is no firewall, as the Pentagon has said. Uh, they'll be sequestered like Amish, but then our children raided and taken. I mean, it, 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 is a, it is a charnel house of trampling and being trampled upon, as O'Brien tells Winston, that is being uh, entered here. And just notice how they're now calmly saying, yes, we're splicing humans with animals. I mean, they're just telling you, but it's secret. You're not allowed to see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's no doubt about it. And most folk, really, I'm, I'm not, I kid you not, most folk today who haven't had an original thought in their heads, they, they like the, the mainstream media, uh, they won't have a thought on this. They won't, they will, they'll, they'll not be hot nor cold. They'll just be, oh, well, that's science for you. Uh, that's progress, by the way. That's what science always tells you, is progress. And uh, they'll go along with it, uh, never thinking about the implications of where it's all to go. But make no doubt about it, uh, uh, this, this system is not about a, a new world order. There's lots of, of stages of coming new world orders and societies and systems already on the books. And um, we're just seeing that the step for the next step of, of purpose-made humans for specific functions. And you don't need the silly humans anymore with their limited capabilities. Yeah, That's I mean, you'll have a sex about. slave who looks like Marilyn Monroe and even has her DNA. But she'll be 1% squid, so she has no Alan Watts' view on the situation in Oslo, Norway. Now being used to call for crackdowns on the Internet, free speech, um, the Second Amendment, and gun ownership. It is really, really uh, obvious what's going on here. Uh, and this guy, now we learn, a Norway Nazi was on drugs. Maniac took substances to make him strong. We're going to get more into that. Uh, Alan Watt, it is so fundamental, it is such a huge issue uh, to sit here and talk about how we're living in an antique reality, that's a great way of putting it, that there is a breakaway civilization, that the establishment has written white books, uh, white papers on all of this for decades, uh, that, that the cloning is much more advanced. I mean, they admit, oh, yeah, we kept it secret from you in England. We're splicing humans with everything. They don't worry. They don't have rights because they're part spider. They're part. I mean, this is so incredible that they, for at least 20 years, have been growing humans in cows that are part cows so that the, the cow doesn't reject them to then harvest their organs. I mean, again, that was in BBC 15 years ago, and they said, that, that have been going on for five years secretly. Now, now this is what they admit they're doing. From your research, Alan, how advanced is it? Because the word I've gotten from a physician and others that have treated heads of state is that they're already staging their deaths. And that uh, it's not just Ken Lay that went to Paraguay, you know, right before he was about to be sentenced or after he'd been sentenced, but turned himself in, uh, that, that, that this is going on. But, I mean, undoubtedly, there's a lot of secret technology. From your research, how much more advanced is it, or do we have no idea? I, I think from the clues of the past, that's where you go on, and uh, they're probably at least 200 years ahead of where we are. Um, when you look into the writings even of uh, uh, Mary Shelley, for instance, Shelley was, her, her husband, the poet, was a member of uh, the high societies. At that time, they clouded themselves under uh, secret societies and uh, masonry and so on. But in reality, at the very top of that, there was, there was pure science there. And they, they were given access to the sciences of the time. And she didn't come up with her idea of a Frankenstein, uh, someone, a human being put together by body parts by herself. It was because uh, she was in with the groups that were actually discussing this and maybe some who were actually trying to do it at the time. And, uh, and really, they're so far ahead that uh, it boggles the mind. As I say, in the 50s, um, before we even had the transistor radio, uh, they had the CIA, as Nick Biggie showed on television. Um, he, he showed the equipment which could beam a thought into your head or a, or, a, or a sound or music into the middle, the center of your head, uh, on line of sight. So it could go for miles if you were high enough on a hill. You could literally pick your target and do it then. It was more than voice to skull. And uh, 
but it also these things also had the capability of um, interfering with, with the, uh, basically the wave that comes, the pulse for, for your heart. It, it originates in the brain, and you can interfere with that pathway and give a person a heart attack. Uh, now, this stuff, you could put, these little gadgets you could put in your pocket in the 1950s, it had to be incredibly uh, amazing solid-state circuitry with microtransistors, etc. Oh, let me stop you. You know, I talk about all, you talk about it too. Aldous Huxley, uh, Julian Huxley's brother, who wrote about genetic engineering and, and, and GMO food and different classes of humans in Brave New World, published in, what, 32, 33, he gave a speech when he knew he was dying and said, this is all real, and even though I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to stop us, and was laughing at everyone. They thought he was being a good guy, warning them. And, and he said, at our universities, we have people with uh, microelectronics already in their brain and we're already testing this to be able to remote control humans. And then in, by the 70s, they admitted they had microchip remote control cockroaches in university reports. They're just now telling the public now. So here he was saying, actually, my book isn't fiction. This is what we've been doing secretly. Uh, you know, decades ago, we had microelectronics in people's brains. Oh, yeah. And you have had Delgado, I should say, famous for his bull. Uh, where he put a microchip in his brain and, and remotely controlled it. He could stop a charge from the bull. But he, he was also, and there's, there's some videos up there on YouTube where he's talking about it wasn't just uh, animals he was practicing on. He was practicing on humans. Of course he was. And uh, uh, so this is, a very old, this is very old stuff because the, the idea when they, they began this, this uh, socialist movement, the most folk think is left wing, it's really at the top of the, the right wing who run the socialist movement. And that's why banks are all behind it and so on. But uh, they knew they wanted to bring in a society of well-behaved people who would simply be a slave society, cause no problems, no crime. And how would you make that happen? Well, it, it dissected all forms of conflict, all, all conflict, right down to the family home, by the way. And that was part of the reason they came up with, we must dissolve the family unit. And they, so admit, and they admit the whole plan is to play men and women off against each other, and they give the cues to men how to behave that'll enrage women, and then they give the women cues to tell them, act like this, you'll be successful. It's really the opposite. Total civilization sabotage. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. You may be arrested and or subject to other police action. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on Earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secretive world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Hi, this is Steve Shank and Babs Rosberg with eFoods Direct. Babs, you work a lot with shipping and things are going absolutely nuts with this new Independence Month Patriot Pack that eFoods is giving away. The way things are going, we're shipping thousands of these great little Patriot Packs out. Just an example, Sherry from Arkansas made a $1,300 order. We shipped her five free Patriot Packs, $750 more free food. Folks are really surprised at what we're actually giving away. Now, folks, we've had 235 years of freedom in this country, so for every $235 worth of food ordered, we give away a $149 Patriot Pack free. To order the best food on the planet, call 800-409-5633 or go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Alex. A free 12-day supply Patriot Pack with every $235 worth of food ordered. Call 800-409-5633 or eFoodsDirect.com slash Alex.
A very wealthy U.S. citizen is predicting that in 2011, we will witness the most important day in America in more than 50 years. He says it will change everything about our lives. The way you shop, travel, invest, educate your children, and even how you take care of your health and your own family. Now, this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years. The crazy part is, he's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, General Growth Properties. In fact, Barron's called his work a dire prophecy. Recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet, and it's a real eye-opener. I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can find the video at www.endofamerica3.com. That's endofamerica, the number three, dot com. Watch the free video at www.endofamerica3.com. That's endofamerica3.com. From Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Fifty thousand unstoppable Alan Watts. They're cloning him. Look out! <laughs> Look, the globalists want to play God. They want the live extension technologies. They've undoubtedly already have them. Uh, they're now bragging they have them. They're offering uh, extended lives to people now who are, quote, wealthy, uh, if they'll buy into transhumanism. But the, but the transhumanist technocratic technological uh, systems they're offering are basically enslavement systems. So that's what the general public's going to get is an enslavement system in the name of life extension. Uh, and we have no idea what the actual controllers are doing. When you see people like Gordon Brown or Bill Clinton or George W. Bush or Obama, they're meant to politically rise and fall, be built up and destroyed, like a shield that a knight holds up. And the shield gets all bent up and battered and bruised. And then when they're done after four to eight years, they throw it down and pick up another one. And it's these fundamental things people need to... Uh, understand, you know, if you uh, look at the news today, uh, they're saying no debt deal. And oh my gosh, now we may default and have depression. They're already defaulting. They're already devaluing the dollar. We're already in a depression. And, and, and the bankers are training us to just everything's about the government. Everything's about the bankers and everything's about our credit regions, uh, the credit agencies, uh, uh, ratings. I mean, they're more important now than the president. And then who are they? Revolving door minions of Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan and others. And, and, you know, now the GOP is revolting, just like in 94 with Newt Gingrich, who ended up making sure the contract on America didn't get through. A guy who wrote the forward to multiple Alvin and Heidi Toffler books calling for world government, calling for a technocracy, calling for the end of America. And, and they talk about how conservative Newt Gingrich is because people say he's conservative when he's promoting carbon taxes. But I got to tell you, 10 years ago, people wouldn't wake up to Newt Gingrich. Today, they do. And so that's the good news. But now they're saying the GOP has revolted uh, and uh, isn't going to go along with all this. But, but again, it's all part of this process. And as long as people can be kept... In this false narrative, this false reality, as you go up through politics and media, if you show that you'll buy into the false system, you are promoted in the false system. But if you don't go along with the false system, if you question the, 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 the presented reality, then, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. And now having any opinion is a conspiracy theory. Uh, and Cass Sunstein at the White House says, we'll flood the Internet with false conspiracy theories. We'll flood the Internet with infighting, with bickering. And they're trying to do that. But in the writings of the ruling class is what they really set up. And that's what Alan Watt covers. That's what I cover. Alan continuing uh, looking at the globalist uh, program uh, and operations. I see revolts from people within the technotronic technocratic class being one of the biggest threats to their system. That's why they're trying to go to an automated global computer system 
where they don't need armies because it's robot and drone driven and the robots are worked on by robots and robots work on those robots and then some human technicians they already admit no one at a major computer company even knows how the computers work now uh it, it's just different systems integrated together and uh the humans can't even understand it this is going to get more and more uh pronounced and the elite are all over the news saying we don't need people anymore humans will humans be kept as pets and the elites already talking about the computers like they've already merged with them and ray kurzweil says within 15 years the elite will merge but if the evidence is that they're already more advanced than we know the question is have they already attempted to merge uh, or is it all a bunch of quackery uh, where they claim that they have these systems, but um, they can't even really use them because they don't understand them? Yeah, well, they already have um, a whole list of things lined up they're working on now. Even um, DARPA has admitted that Homeland Security. I mentioned that on a page last week. Uh, all the things are coming up and they're working on and one was uh, an artificially uh, intelligent uh, computer system that would literally analyze you and decide even if you should pass the information that you're putting out there on to others or not or who they should pass it on to no one would interfere with it it would be on its own independent and so they already have artificial intelligent machines using various kinds of uh, different uh, algorithm, algorithms and so on however at the top you got to understand too uh, that uh, they've been doing amazing stuff, even in Sweden, for since the 70s that we know of, on prisoners. That was where they first tried to do uh, human uh, and, and machine interface, brain interface. This uh, interfacing isn't just to help paraplegics, believe you me, like DARPA would have you think. It's to do with uh, if they can possibly, in the future, or if they've done it already, who knows, download a person's memory. That's the whole point of it all. Uh, for the for the, the the ruling elite who have uh, who, who age, they can certainly slow their aging. In fact, David Suzuki, a big player in the greening program, who's who calls people maggots. By the way, he, he's the hero of Canada. But people are maggots. But he says there's better kinds of maggots than others. I guess he's referring to his own class. But uh, he said on television years ago, national television live, that he says we now, and he is a geneticist, by the way. He says, we now have the, the ability to make a person live to 500 years if we want to. Well, why not 1,000 or 2,000? The problem is the brain would tend to deteriorate. So the idea, even mentioned years ago in the science magazines, if we could possibly clone, and they said they could, by the way, clone a, a full human being within two weeks because they can switch on your growth uh, factors and your hormones and so on, make you literally grow up from an embryo into, into a, huel, a, a full human in a few weeks. And it, at first they said it was for body parts, for special people. Uh, but now it's, it's more into, uh, no, could they possibly take uh, the memory of that aged person, especially the first batch who, who haven't uh, stayed young, put it that way, if they haven't had the treatment for eternal youth, but could we possibly take that memory from the aged person and transfer it into a, his own clone? And, uh, and so they've been talking about this and working on it, obviously, and that's what really the, the brain-machine interface has been all about. Uh, and again, the spin-offs are amazing because they also say, well, if we can tap into the brain, we, can, we won't need the torture techniques anymore. We, we can plug into you and find out what you're thinking, uh, download all your memories, and uh, they'll know exactly if you've been lying to them or not. Uh, this has all been going ahead as we quietly watch uh, soccer or football or whatever else we're watching, or Lady Gaga dancing with plasticized cor uh, corpses. I mean, th this is, the, th this is the, the reality of where we are. The elite's prime directive is for their own survival. We must always remember that. They have contingency plans for all kinds of things that could go wrong in the world for themselves. We know they've got underground uh, cities even. Uh, they've even had uh, characters in England going around the underground bases, not getting into them, but they admit they're there. And they've had them for years in case there's uh, of all kinds of things, not just nuclear disaster, but possibly or oh, an asteroid hitting you, anything at all they can think of because the elite... Being at the top of the tree, the evolution tree, is they, they talk about it themselves, that's what they say. Uh, the fittest to survive must make sure, must ensure that their own personal survival comes first. We are all expendable in the process. That's right, and Alan. sci-fi movies show you that, like 2012, it's always the elite that survive, the rest are sacrificed. Yeah. Absolutely, and expanding on that, just like I knew they were about to move from the Muslim Al-Qaeda to the white terrorist, 
so the whole apparatus could be turned loose on everyone as it was always built and designed for. Now they're just admitting uh, its uh, true function that uh, they are now preconditioning how sexy it is. The world after humans, TV shows, movies, books, on end caps at grocery stores, everyone learning how trendy it is to hate their fellow humans. So when you're SWAT teamed or drug away or dying of cancer, when half your block's dying of something, you know, as the soft kill is incrementally uh, intensified, the ambient uh, slow kill system accelerated uh, towards fast kill, that it's, it's, it's a subconscious preparation of, of a celebration uh, of our destruction uh, and the pot-bellied parasites ruling over us. Um, and I see this now building towards a crescendo. I know they'll want to release smaller bioplagues first, pose as saviors, use that as an excuse to put in a tighter control grid, and then release even more deadly plagues, and then a tighter control grid, always playing the part of the saviors while they murder us. Uh, but I see them edging towards that, and I see them debating, uh, you know, how great it's going to be when the airborne Ebola is released, and how great it is that the human mouse pox kills 99%, and isn't it time to just go ahead and pull the trigger? Like it's an exciting, sexy, something new for them, and they want to pull the Moonraker trigger. Uh, how far away do you think that is till they, I mean, they got all these new movies coming out with Matt Damon about billions dying and uh, everything from the new bio plague so so uh, how long till they really get to have their holiday their their mass murder enjoyment time because then they get to go to the bunkers and you know be you know given the cure and everything and kind of all be honest about it and watch it on their robotic cameras the mass destruction and then they get to reemerge and oh everything's so much fun i mean how long till they till they take the people that they've turned into mindless sports fans and just start mass slaughtering everybody well we're, we're in the, the phase now which they have disclosed from their own military think tanks for the next 50 years or so their projections and they've had that out for a few years now and uh, the, the both the u.s and the british uh, nato group uh, came to the same conclusions uh, they're going to we, we, and they're doing it they're getting folk off the land the rural areas through incredible uh, masses of new regulations uh, the gasoline is going up, that'll get you off too. Uh, the clo they've closed down most of the country hospitals, so you have to move into the city if you want treatment. Uh, there are a hundred different ways to get you to move, just like animals again. How do we get them to move from here to there? And uh, it's all been discussed. And uh, so once we're all in the over already overcrowded cities, they've already got an internal army. Uh, RAND, by the way, I've got the RAND document on that too, where they, they talked about the coming uh, civil strife in the U.S. As they, as they push more and more folk into the overcrowded cities. So they're always planning ahead for the, for the fallout. And uh, once we're together, it's easier then to release the plagues. Now, they're talking up to the year 2020 uh, to try to cram us into the cities. That's why they're on a roll now with austerity. Austerity suddenly comes in after the, the last pla uh, planned bank crash, which wasn't a crash at all, really. And uh, things didn't just go to money heaven, somebody's got the key to it. But uh, the, the reality is this is austerity and uh, we've also got to share and reduce our, our standard of living and eventually the United Nations, as it says in its own charter for the Department of Agriculture, will dish out the food, they'll dole out the food to each region of the earth and then you must bring down your own population according to the rations that you're given. That's in their own mandates, by the way. Yeah, that's in the Kissinger so, documents and all of the new ones, but instead of doing it secretly, like 30 years ago, now Ted Turner comes out with Nat Rothschild and says you should only be able to have one child and that child will be taxed. But then meanwhile, they've all got private jets and private trains and uh, yachts and, you know, five children apiece. And, and uh, you know, Kate Middleton is lecturing you on carbon taxes. And yeah. we've now moved into a cottage. It's only 300 rooms for the earth. And, uh, I mean, it, it's just all asinine well, hypocrisy in our face. Well, yes, but from their point of view, they don't see that as that. Because they, do, but they truly believe that they are superior people genetically, 
uh, and they believe that they've evolved. We're junk genes. We're the junk genes left at the bottom. And one of the arguments I, I saw in a, a scientific discussion was uh, the, the proof of the fact that the people are junk genes is uh, that they would, have, they would have been up amongst the elite if they had the ability to get ahead uh, in their genetic makeup. Therefore, because they haven't gone up to multimillionaire status and have no desire to, then they, they equate that to what they call arrested civilizations of Africa and primitive tribes. They're junk genes, they can't move on. Uh, we, have, we do move on all the time. We are involved in planning the future. We control the future. Exactly. So Moving on is being well, uh, willing to slit your grandmother's throat and enjoy it. The true human genes of helping your community, building, being admired because of your art or your strength or your ability to hunt or your ability to build. Uh, no, 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 no. Now it's your ability to team up in gangs and lie and manipulate people and dumb folks down and make things ugly. And that's why they're selling us with Lady Gaga with the dead Chinese corpses just openly flaunting, look, I'm dancing with murdered prisoners. It's beautiful. That way, no one will stand up for you when you're being murdered. Mm. Also, that about it. people who are debased and, and thoroughly dehumanized do not stand up together for anything. And so it's a warfare technique as well. Uh, and you use, you use cultural wars all the time and economic wars all the time as well. But these elites, you see, are really the deviants. And we don't understand that because... Uh, in the psychopathic nature of humanity, the, the groups that inbred over time were the ones that uh, slaughtered their neighbors and then took over the land. And, then, and, and that's really real estate was always land. That's real estate as opposed to fake estate, you know, which is their money system, which we believe in. We've been taught to believe in it. And, uh, but in reality, they became kings and queens and, and uh, nobles because they had the ability to always uh, slaughter anybody for, for, as an example to others at any time at all. And, uh, and, and they, they've actually got books out uh, trying to rationalize the necessity for this kind of behavior and that mankind can't do without, without them. That's what they say themselves. We can't do without them because they're the risk takers, etc., etc. But in reality, we're, we're run by clubs of psychopaths, inbreds. Uh, who, so the deviants run the normal people, the ordinary people who can get along and who can cooperate uh, for their own survival. The elites are afraid of the masses, uh, even though they've used the masses, that they see the time is coming when they will no longer need them because they can then uh, create a specific uh, job-created uh, uh, human or beings for the specific tasks that we used to do the ordinary folk used to do. And that, that's what all this work is about. They're using our tax money like crazy to make this happen, to ensure their survival, where they'll be served with all kinds of uh, uh, chimeras, basically. They're especially bred for the purpose that they will do all their lives. And, and that's going on at breakneck speed. Uh, undoubtedly, these chimeras are out walking the streets now. This has been going on for decades. And they're just now telling the slaves this because they think they've got us into a deep enough trance. But I'm here to tell you, Alan, I'm seeing record numbers of people waking up, and I mean fully waking up. Uh, how do you uh, break people out of their trance? You, you, have to, uh, you have to start with them by telling them why their dollar is being divided. Something they can understand, it hits them personally. Telling them why their families are breaking up or their daughter's going off with another woman or something like that. Uh, that's kind of where it's coming from and, and what's the purpose is behind it. Things that they can actually relate to in their own lives. And that's the start of it all. Yeah, yeah I found uh, uh, people are like, wow, you're right, bisphenol A does give you cancer and does reduce your fertility. And uh, now I get emails saying, oh, they're taking bisphenol A off the shelves everywhere, you conspiracy theorist. It's like, oh, it's not a problem. They're taking it off the shelves. First, it wasn't bad for you. Now we've been proven right. I tweeted to share Alan originally because I wanted to talk about this shooter who we now know is on drugs and, and all, all the rest of it. I mean, this is, I could see the predictive programming. I could see the media getting ready to rebrand terrorism onto the evil white male. And I, I called it last Thursday. I said the attack's imminent. And, and, and that's what you talk about. Once you see the fifth grade level propaganda, you know exactly what they're going to do. It's so frustrating to, like you said, being the fool on the hill, but really you're not the fool on the hill. Everybody else is deaf, dumb, and blind. Alan Watt, final comments on that. Yeah, it's like deja vu. You know what's coming and what they have to do because 
even, even to do with the, the, the big bone of contention from the whole 9-11 deal onwards across the world, uh, the Western world and in Britain and elsewhere, is why should everyone else have to uh, go through all of this, have all of their mail ripped open, have all their emails uh, uh, copied in, and uh, stored forever, be under the scrutiny of the microscope? How come everybody, when supposedly it was all to do with, start, it started off with Muslim extremists in, in, in the Middle East and, and elsewhere? Uh, so people were saying, why are, why are old ladies who have lived their, their, all their life in America uh, with blue eyes and old granny being searched and groped at the at the at these particular checkout thing. Well, that was a bone of contention. Now they've given you a reason why. It could be any one of you. You see, it's a white guy, uh, and so so they had to justify all. It could be a policeman. It could be a policeman. It, oh, oh, it's the returning veterans. Exactly. And they had so they had to give you a reason why because for since nine eleven to the present, you see, we haven't seen it. And so they've given you the sacrificial lamb or whoever they've set up, whatever uh, guy they've set up to do it. And, and remember, too, we'll never get the truth on this story, never, ever get the truth. If this fellow did go over to London and meet with uh, top-ranking secret, supposedly, uh, Knights Templars group, or, was, or were they a bunch of, of CIA, MI6, Mossad guys conning this little fool to go and do this job? We'll never know. We'll never know. But it's got all the earmarks that it was staged. Yeah, it does. It does. And, and believe you me, in this day and age, you cannot get, do anything and get away with it without people knowing about it. We're all under observation. And it even, even admitted that uh, the, the, the CIA were watching this guy. In Norway, yeah, so was, MI, so was MI5 and 6. Yeah. Uh, oh, and of course... And, this... and the forums, too, that he belonged to. Yeah. No, it's it's 100% staged, and now we know he's all hopped up on drugs. He'll, he'll end up going into the mental institution there and never be seen again. Uh, Alan Watt, uh, great points. Thank you so much for spending time with us.